Everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right. Get those Bibles in the air, everybody. Say with me, this is my Bible. Bible. I am what my Bible says I am. I can do what my Bible says I can do. I have absolutely everything my Bible says I have. For I am a believer, not a doubter. For faith comes by hearing, and hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. This uh, particular month, we're looking at the promise of the supernatural. We're going to start off like we always do with introductory principles and uh, defining and understanding what the term is all about before we enter into, you know, some of those deeper places. Um, I love coming straight into prayer uh, because prayer is part of the supernatural element. And especially if you do prayer right, it creates an environment for the supernatural to take place. And so when we talk about the supernatural, so many people have different meanings uh, concerning the supernatural. So we want to talk about it from a biblical perspective. When we define supernatural, the definition of it means of or relating to or ex- existence outside the natural world. Existence outside the natural world attributed to a power that seems to violate or go beyond natural forces of or relating to deity of or relating to the immediate exercise of divine power called the miraculous. So as we go through this month, we're going to study each one of those because uh, we belong to a kingdom that functions supernaturally. And we also live in an environment that's both natural and spiritual. And uh, we, we need to um, define these terms so we can understand um, when we're moving in, in, in the supernatural, when we're not. Amen? Amen. How to tap in on the supernatural. Uh, what the supernatural is all about and how it benefits us. So we're just going to kind of tear these things down this month and study them out. Is the word, I asked myself, is the word supernatural in the Bible? I went and began to look it up. I thank God for computers because you don't have to uh, sit there for hours on end uh, trying to exegete something. You can just go to the computer. It will do all the calculations for you. The word supernatural is not found in the King James Version. It is found in other versions. And so I went through just to get a look at um, what the Bible called supernatural. And I, and, and I was able to see the different statements and declarations of supernatural functionings that maybe we need to pay a little bit more attention to. And we didn't consider that these things were also supernatural. Is that good? So tonight we're just going to kind of unravel this thing. Um, so let's go to first Kings chapter three, verse 28. It doesn't matter if you go to all the scripture with me. Um, just so long as you let this thing bask in you, build faith in you and give you insight and illumination. Amen. Write them down, especially if you want to go home and um, and continue the study and be prepared next week. Now, something that I should say, maybe to help us get a little bit hungry for this subject, uh, the supernatural, we know. I'm going to just deal from the, the kingdom perspective. In light, not in darkness. Let's deal from the kingdom perspective concerning light. The supernatural is a divine intervention of of the supernatural into natural situations. We all have need for supernatural situ, uh, uh, occurrences in our life. Uh, which we can say, mirac- I'm trying to, you know, really coin my phrase so I don't give out a lot before the time. So I'm trying to restrict myself. Okay, so so we all have need of some type of divine intervention. And many times we don't realize it, but the supernatural is taking place on a daily basis in our lives. But because we're so carnally refined, we can't see the supernatural and the divine. Amen. Amen. So it's going to be very important for us to search it out so that we can know. Oh, my God, I just had an experience. 
and we can start giving glory unto God for the things that he has actually brought us through, the, 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 the things that he has intervened, the things that he is doing through us. And we can begin to give him the glory. Now, why should we give him the glory? The more you glorify God for his presence in your life, that present enlarges itself. Amen. 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 And you'll find yourself walking and talking with God on a daily basis and having immediate access to the supernatural when you can recognize it and acknowledge it. Amen. Amen. All right. First Kings three and 28. Now. This um, uh, and I'm also give you a couple of scriptures um, to verify what I'm saying. One is going to hold the word supernatural. The other is going to hold the King James statement of the supernatural in other terms. First King three twenty eight says, and all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged. And they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him. To do judgment. Now in one of the other translations. It says it like this. When all Israel heard about. The judicial decision. Which the king had rendered. They respected the king. For they realized. That he possessed supernatural wisdom. To make judicial decisions. So we can see now. The exchange of that word. In the King James word. Version It doesn't use supernatural, but it uses, it calls it the wisdom of God, that the king was given the wisdom of God, which, which this other version, NET, says it's supernatural wisdom. It's a wisdom that wouldn't occur to you in your human state. This, this story is about Solomon when the two ladies came and, and they had two babies. One baby died and, the, and, uh, and, uh, and this one mother went in and exchanged the live baby for the dead baby. And they came arguing over the live baby to the king. And this was King Solomon who had gone before the Lord. And uh, the Lord said, what do you require of me? He said that you make me wise so that I'll know how to go in and out amongst your people. He didn't even ask for wealth and riches or uh, the demise of his enemies. He asked for wisdom. Yeah. So God imparted to him divine, supernatural wisdom. The wisdom that is beyond natural thinking. Yeah. Okay, now, now you got to catch on to what I'm talking about because anything I preach is accessible by the believer by faith. So you want to you want to ascribe to what I'm teaching, because if you exhibit supernatural wisdom in the workplace, they will elevate you. (laughs) Come on, somebody. Sometimes, you know, you need you need more than just what you've learned in books. Amen. 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 You need a thought process that goes way beyond carnal thinking. All right. So wisdom. Then the wisdom of God is called supernatural wisdom. So when you're thinking on a scale outside the box, you need to recognize God is doing something special with me. God is important. Uh, My 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 staff. A lot of times they get uh, they get awed at me, and uh, because they'll be stuck. In, in, in solutions and situations. And they'll ask me about it and I'll just rattle off the answer. And they're just like, what? Where did that come from? Well, I'm always giving myself over to uh, the power of the Holy Ghost to help me administrate his organization. Yeah. So I'm thinking on a plane that's, uh, that's exceeded natural means. Yeah. Amen. This is like the time when they stole our copper out here, shut down all our water, and they was thinking we was going to have to have church somewhere else. And I told them, no, you just go ahead and call, you know, those facilities, bring out your bathroom facilities. You just uh, uh, call them up, br- uh, bring those in. And it was like it happened Saturday night. We had to have church Sunday morning, and they was like, what are we going to do? There's no water. There's no uh, bathroom facilities. And I just made my own. Then they closed the street in front of us 
Hey, yeah, they closed down our street. We called them, called on the city, say, wait a minute, we do business on Sunday. They say, but not this Sunday, you're not going to do business because we closing the street down because we're going to repave it. So they was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? I said, what we're going to do is we're not going to park in a place that will inhibit the people from coming. We're going to surround this block with our attendance. We're going to get people to park. We're going to send vans out to pick them up. We're going to show them the route they need to take. We put it all on internet. Had one of our best services ever. Amen. But you, 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 instead of quitting or shutting down because of natural thinking, tap in on the divine wisdom of God, which is tapping in to the supernatural. Amen. You live a supernatural life. What is supernatural? Beyond natural means. Amen. 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 Now, the supernatural is also stated uh, in Isaiah 28, 29. It says, this also cometh forth from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. Now, the other version says, this also comes from the Lord who commands armies, who gives supernatural guidance and imparts great wisdom. Supernatural guidance. You really have to, uh, uh, oh, I could be here all night. Um. When God is guiding you, 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 you have to understand that you're going to catch that guidance through discernment and not through intellect. Once you start trying to rationalize and figure it out, you'll get lost. So what you must do now is catch it through discernment. All right. Uh, we was, um, how did this happen? We was, um, um, we, we, we had moved into a certain area in the Antelope Valley and, um, we had been praying to God for that. You know, we wanted to do a couple of things. We wanted to get ourselves settled down so we didn't have to move anymore. Mm-hmm. And then we wanted to locate a facility for, um, you know, the, um, the church up there. So the Lord, you know, we had temporarily moved in our, our uh, children's home there in Antelope Valley and was helping them with that for a minute. And so um, they was going to get rid of it and we had to go. And so my wife said, well, I don't want to move out of this area. We started looking around in different areas and uh, pretty nice houses, but she didn't like the area. And she told me, she said, you take me right back over there uh, by that <laughs> by that golf course because I don't want to live in these places. And I said, we, would look, we looked around there and there was nothing up for, for, for lease. Amen. Nothing available. So something in me said, just do what she says. I, I heard it like that. I'm, I'm used to it now. Amen. Usually I was be get macho, my ego get involved, and I act like a man. <laughs> now I've learned to be led by the Spirit. I've learned to be led by the Spirit. So I said, okay, all right, it's my job to provide for this woman. And this woman wants to live in a certain area. So now, Holy Spirit, you have to help us with this. So she said, you take me over, over there. And the Holy Spirit witnessed and said, you take her right on over there, and I want you to go this direction. <laughs> Okay, wasn't the direction I should have went, but I was under supernatural guidance. Yeah. Y'all, y'all better walk with me now. So I'm just, I'm just going the way he told me to go. We whisk around this one street and uh, there's a couple outside in the yard nailing down. Uh, yeah, yeah, just like that. And, and so we, she says, stop, stop. <laughs> So we got out, we walked up to him and says, uh, is this house available? It just came available today. I'm just putting a sign in the ground today. And, and so she said, can we go in and see it? Well, we're not showing it, but you know how wives do. We want to go see it. So we go through the house and she said, this is it. This is it. I come back, tell the lady we want the house. And she said, well, you have to fill out our application. She said, where do you live? I said, around the, the corner. She said, well, I'll follow you around. She followed around the corner, gave us the application. She came to get some information. She walked in the house where we were, looked around and said, you don't need this. You got the house. The way you take care of this place. (laughs) Come on, somebody. 
Right, just like that. But it was supernatural guidance. You can't reason that. You, you can, if you start reasoning and analyzing it, you're going to miss the divine intervention of God to get you in a place that you desire. Now, living there put us across the street from a deacon who told us about a facility. I'm, I'm speeding up the story. About a facility that was getting ready to come available. Y'all not trying to help me. And I ain't trying to release too much information. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But we're working on a plan. Amen. Clap your hands for the plan. Amen. I let you know when we finish. <laughs> so, so it's guidance. So you can, you got to be careful that you don't let your intellect get in the way. Amen. Amen. I'm not telling you to shut it down and start walking blindly through, through the world. But I'm telling you, when you ask the Lord to do something for you and you ask him to, to lead you into something, be discerning enough to know when he's dealing with you. He'll deal with your spirit. Now, uh, so, so the supernatural is also stated to be wonderful in counsel. Wonderful. is He's a counselor. He will counsel you. I remember times when the Holy Ghost, he told me, he would tell me, he said, I need you to stop by the store. And, you know, I, I, I would catch this in my spirit. Stop by the store and buy some flowers and buy some candy. Take home. Ah, she don't like that stuff. I go home. She's having a bad day. And she says, man, if I could have just had some flowers. So we miss living supernaturally by trying to reason everything out, rationalize everything, analyze everything with our carnal thinking instead of catching what the spirit is saying. Amen. So, so wonderful counsel is, is, a, is supernatural guidance. So if he counsels you, you're partaking of the supernatural. When he counsels you. Okay, okay. Uh, we have sat down with people in our, uh, in our office. And, and we've sat down with members who've had certain situations and certain enigmas. They couldn't unravel. And their relationship was stuck. And they sit down and I let them talk for a minute. And I would say this, this, and this, and this. And completely unravel their situation. Amen. Amen. Well, it's, it's wonderful in counsel. That's part of the supernatural. So when you come into my office, I'm not a psychologist. I am a biblical counselor Amen. under the hands of a supernatural God Amen. that will give you supernatural counsel Amen. that will bring enlightenment. Now, if you're a little bit broke, I advise you go to the psychologist. <laughs> Get them, you know, things going properly. Because <laughs> you might not understand what I'm talking about. Amen. You'll come in. I'll give you supernatural wisdom and you look at me like I'm crazy. But you the one that really crazy. <laughs> so you need to go to psychiatry and get some things fixed if you need to. Okay, I'll get myself in trouble. I'll get myself in trouble. Huh? But that's for real. You got to get help however you can get it. But if you can believe the gospel and believe the word of God, then it will work for you. But if you're going to analyze it and reduce it to nothing, you need to go get yourself fixed so that you can believe. Amen. Well, thank you, Jesus. I thought I'd just help somebody out there in the cyber world. Okay. Now go to Matthew 14. We're looking, we're just kind of discovering this word supernatural because it's not located in the King James Version, but it's located in other versions. And we're seeing what the King James calls the supernatural. All right. In, in Matthew 14 and 2, it says, and said unto his disciples, this is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Uh, the other version says, uh, this is John the Baptist. He told his servants he has been raised from the dead. And that's why supernatural powers are at work in him. That was Herod beheaded, you know, for Herodias sake, beheaded John. And when Jesus came doing miracles, you know, he, he thought that God had raised John up to do these great works because John was a righteous man. But what I'm trying to show you here is that super, the supernatural 
is called in the King James Version, mighty works. Mm-hmm. Mighty works. Mighty works. Say mighty works. Mighty works. Amen. Mighty works. And sometimes you have to really recognize what a mighty work is. Mm-hmm. It may not all the time be opening blinded eyes. Okay. It may not all the time be opening up the deaf ear, the ears or causing the lame to walk. But a mighty work may be causing a people from all different types of cultures to be able to come and blend together as a bouquet and worship under one auspices and flow together as brothers and sisters in the Lord. It's a supernatural work. You better shake somebody's hand or give them a high five and say, I'm here because of the supernatural. That's why I can sit by you tonight. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. So it's it's, it's stated as a mighty work. So the supernatural state is a mighty work. You got to understand God does mighty works in your life. When God elevates you on a job that you don't qualify for, you better give him glory. That's a mighty work. When you get fired and nobody will hire you and God put a divine inspiration for you to start your own business and then put his hand on the business to accelerate, that's a mighty word. Come on, somebody. Supernatural in the King James Version is mighty words. Now, let's look at John chapter six. John chapter six and verse number 30. You can write it down. It says, um, and they said, therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? So the supernatural here is noted as a sign, as a sign, something that God gives you for clarity and to point you in a a right direction. That's That's a sign. Something that God does supernaturally in your life to let you know he's with you. That's a sign. You come into the company of somebody that you needed to know who had the information that you just prayed to God for. And God causes you to meet up for lunch. That's a sign. God's working on your behalf. Amen, somebody. So the supernatural can also be a a terminal. Uh, The terminology can be stated, signs, signs and wonders, we call them. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. So you're seeing that there are many things that we encounter on a daily basis that are really supernatural. Really supernatural. You may be on the phone just talking with your friend and they're pouring their heart out to you and you come with an answer. And they say, I never thought about it like that. You just helped me. And if you're smart, you acknowledge that that was the supernatural. Amen. 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 Okay. Now, 1 Corinthians, I told you, chapter 10, verse number 3. says, and they did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So, we're seeing that the supernatural in the uh, King James Version is called spiritual. Spiritual. So, I I, I took my liberty and I, I started going other places to try to reference it. So I went to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. The Amplified says it like this. This is is good, y'all. The Amplified says it like this. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments of supernatural energy. Brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. So spiritual gifts... It's called supernatural energy. Supernatural energy. 
Um, so we see that the spiritual gifts now, that word spiritual is going to be important for us, is considered supernatural. So when one is flowing in the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, prophecy, or tongues, or interpretation of, of tongues, or the working of miracles, or, or faith, or healing, it is a spiritual gift, otherwise known as the supernatural. So when one is operating this way, we're operating in the supernatural. Now this is all important because his kingdom is driven by the supernatural. That's how we know the difference between those who have connected with covenant and those who are on the outside talking about covenant. Okay, I'm going to say something. I hope I don't hurt nobody. Okay, can I say it? All right, I'm going to say it. All right. The fruit of a church is not its size. The fruit of a church is the manifestation of the word that is preached. So, 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 in the old days, I, I can talk about it. I was in Pentecostal church. We did a lot of dancing. Yes, we did. We did a lot of shouting. Yes, we did. We clapped our hands and we jerked and did a dance and went home and still had to pay them bills. It did nothing for training us on how to deal with life. It made us feel good, but it did us no good. Because we had no answers for the dilemmas of life. So you can't judge a church's fruit by its numbers. You must judge it by the manifestation of the word that's preached. It's what, be, it's what being taught working for the people. That's how you know something's going on. Because lives are turning around. Marriages are being restored and healed. Come on. Crazy singles are living celibate for the first time in their lives. <laughs> Hallelujah. Faith is working. Anybody hearing me in here? Amen. That's how you know you got a supernatural environment. You belong to a supernatural covenant. The word is working. Amen. Now, uh, so spiritual gifts, another word for supernatural. Now, this is something. First Corinthians chapter 15. I'll give you two scriptures on this. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 44. Hey, I'm going to pick it up in midstream. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Amplified version said it is sown a natural physical body. It is raised a supernatural, parentheses, a spiritual body. As surely as there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Wow. So when we get into doctrine of last things, you talk about the resurrection from the dead. You see the resurrection of life that people who are born again receives a body exactly like Jesus. Which, if you study the scripture, you understand it had no limits. He, could, he, could, he was on one side of the wall one minute, his disciples inside locked, and then on the next minute, he's inside with them. Walls could not detain him. Scripture says they was all standing around him, and he started floating. Just started lifting up off the ground. Gravity had no hold on him. It was a spiritual body. A supernatural body. Yes. Are you still with me? Yes. Okay. So now the supernatural intervenes into the natural course of things. Or, or uh, it, it interrupts nature's course. And, and, and of course we saw this in the Bible. 
I'm just proving a fact to you because when we start getting into the deeper things, this is going to be your foundation. And you're going to be settled. We saw Moses at the Red Sea. So the supernatural is to intervene into the natural course of things. There's no way a sea should adhere to a man's voice and gel up on two sides. Stand at attention and let a people walk across free on dry land. So he interrupted the natural course of things. So the supernatural will dominate earthly rules, overturn them and allow a supernatural event to take place in a person's life. We saw it when Moses struck the rock and commanded water to flow out of a rock. Now you tell me about the rocks in your yard. Do they give water? (laughs) That's a natural situation. Yet when he struck it, God, uh, by God's command, water gushed out. Now you got to understand it wasn't trickles of water, drip, drip. You can't give three million people trickles of water and expect them to survive. When he hit that rock, it gushed like a river. You have to get out of the way or you get drowned. That's the only way he could feed not only three million people, but all the livestock they had. Amen. Amen. So it was a supernatural intervention into the natural course of things. We saw it with Jesus with wind and rain. The disciples cried out, don't you care for us? Look at this wind. This storm is going to overtake us. He gets up out of the ship and say, peace, be still. And wind ceases and rain stops. Okay, oh, come on now. You got to get excited because the winds of life be blowing. Talk to me, somebody. But there is the supernatural intervention of God that causes the natural to back up. Now, what does that mean? That means there's spiritual laws that dominate earthly rules. That a thing is okay within the legal perimeters that has been created to flow. But when it puts you in danger, there's a higher rule. Amen. Mm. We saw it when Jesus rebuked the waves. Amen. Amen. We saw it when we saw we saw it in Jesus when he took five loaves of bread. How do you take five natural loaves of bread, two fish, and look out and see five thousand men and tell them to sit down? I'm about to feed you. It was the supernatural. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boys in the boat at night rowing hard. And here come a figure walking toward them on the face of the ocean. And not falling or sinking. They scream for fear. He says, don't y'all be afraid. It's just me. Intervention into the natural course of things. You're not supposed to be able to walk on water. This is incredible stuff now. He's going to pass him by. They say, okay, Jesus, if this is you, bid me come out there. He said, well, I can't lie. It is me. (laughs) Come on out. (laughs) Boy, gets out on the water and starts walking to Jesus. Supernatural intervention into the natural course of things. I'm building your faith for something supernatural to happen and take place in your life. Amen. 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 It's to change earthly rules and submit them to heaven's dominion. I got 10 minutes. Look at Matthew chapter 6. Go there. Look at the, 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 uh, our father prayer. So, so my prayer is to be laced with the supernatural, which means my directive is to govern my circumstances and situations with the, with, with the supernatural Declaration of God. Okay, watch this. In verse 9, Matthew 6 and 9, it says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, 
Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So what are we saying, Pastor? The expectation here is the domination of heaven's rule in the earth realm. That's, that's what I'm supposed to be praying. Now, come on. Boy, wrap this around your head. He wants me to pray heaven's rules to dominate the earth realm. Let's, let's see that again. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Whose will? His will. His will. Thy will be done where? In earth as it is in heaven. So there's no sickness in heaven. So he needs us to take that rule, that principle, and apply it in the earth and dominate earth affairs by his rule. Amen, Amen, somebody. Oh, that means I'm not supposed to settle. I don't care how natural this world is. I'm not supposed to settle for natural outcomes because he said, pray as it is in heaven. So there's no lack in heaven. So I need to take heaven's. Dominate the earth. So, so I need to speak to it. Instead of me saying, I don't have enough gas, I need to say, hey, gas is here now. You may be on the side of the street, you need to start saying, gas is here now. And then all of a sudden, one of your friends ride by and see you and stop and say, hey, what's going on? You say, hey, I need some gas. I got it right here. <laughs> Instead of you crying and shaking and talking about, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know. You know you're going to call heaven's rules to dominate earthly Amen. affairs. Hallelujah. Amen. No money in that bank. Start speaking to it. Money, come now. <laughs> Speak to that thing. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you because I told on you. I got seven minutes. God's. Kingdom, it functions supernaturally. So we're going to look at the supernatural operation. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. Supernatural operation. Okay. In Hebrews 11, 3, it says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And we already saw that supernatural things or spiritual things are supernatural things. Spiritual things are not seen. Yet he said the things that we see have been created from the things we don't see. Go to Genesis 1 and 1. Genesis 1 and 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, seen things. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay. All right. We're getting, we're getting some revelation. Okay. God said some things and the spirit started moving when he said it. Okay. Go to uh, second Peter three, five. I'll just read this is a different version. I'll read this to you. But they deliberately forgot. Forget that long ago by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. So now I'm seeing something because in the beginning, when God spoke, it says in the beginning, God, he, 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 he began to speak because the earth was without form and was void and the spirit started moving. He spoke. And the spirit started moving. He spoke and the invisible thing he spoke, the spirit started moving. So now I understand that the Holy Spirit is responsible for the manifestation of the word of God. So the Holy Spirit now is the regulator of the supernatural. Because all supernatural things are produced by the spirit. Okay, I'm getting shaken up here because because if all su- uh, supernatural things are a product of the spirit and I got the spirit in me, that means I'm carrying around the supernatural with me. Yes. 
<laughs> so, so, so somebody better be careful here because uh, I got power in me. Amen. Amen. Okay. The supernatural manifest life. Go to Ephesians 3.20. Okay. All right. So this is basic, but we need it. We, we need it. We need it. We need it for the events that are about to take place. It says in Ephesians 3.20, now to him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Okay, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered to the heart of man, the things which God had prepared for them that love him. So the natural man can't pick it up. He can't pick up the stuff that's over in the unseen realm that God has prepared for me. <laughs> Come on. And everything in the seen realm came out of the unseen realm. All right. But God have revealed them to us by his spirit. So I couldn't pick it up through my reasoning, my analogy, my natural man. But God reveals it to us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. And God told us to pray as it is in heaven, so let it be in the earth. And the Holy Spirit knows what God has in heaven and the Holy Spirit is inside of us performing the will, the perfect will of God for us in the earth. Amen. All right. Amen. So the spirit of God produces the supernatural. Let's continue to read. For what man know of the things of, of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God know of no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So we have the spirit of God. So that he'll reveal to us the things that God has freely given to us. Because once you know it's yours. Ain't nothing can hold, hold you back. Amen. Ain't nothing can hold you back. Amen. Come on. Amen. Nobody can hold you back. Amen. But if you don't know, if you're shaky and you're not sure, you'll live an entire life without it. But if you have a surety that this thing is yours, y'all not trying to help me, but I'm trying to help you. If you have an assurance in your spirit that this thing belongs to you, then you, you will, you will require it. You, you will not live without it. And you don't care who recognizes it. You don't care who knows about it. You don't care if they have identified it. Look, them, them early years of being a minister, my family couldn't get with that situation. Come on. My dad called me names. He, you're a jack leg, you know, going around trying to make something happen. But that didn't bother me because I already had a witness in my spirit. Though he couldn't see it on the outside, he couldn't change what was going on on the inside. Because the spirit who knows the deep things of God had made a deposit in my spirit. And I was walking in an assurance that if I keep doing what I'm doing one day, they might not have seen it then, but one day as, as I keep walking and as I keep walking this thing out, on. what's on the inside is going to manifest on the outside. Yeah. 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 Everybody's a believer now. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 making me want to shout a little bit now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we have.
not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in words which man wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So the spirit of God produces the supernatural, which means he will produce miracles in your life on the earth today. Hallelujah, somebody. He's the supernatural force behind creation and manifestation. Let me say it again. The Holy Spirit is the supernatural force behind creation and manifestation. We saw him in Genesis 1 and 1 when God, in the beginning, God, amen, created the heavens and the earth. Earth was without form, void. And the Spirit moved upon. Come on, somebody. He is, oh, my time is up. The producer of miracles in our lives today. Amen. Say that to yourself. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the producer of miracles, the producer of miracles in my life today. My life. Oh, Lord. Say it again. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the producer of the supernatural. The producer of, supernatural. The producer of, miracles, the producer of miracles in my life, in my life. Today. today. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's the supernatural force behind creation and manifestation. Okay, that's that's our first leg. That's it. That's our first leg. That's our first leg. Hallelujah. Can you see something about to happen? You know, you know, every we we experience the things that we, we teach. We experience it. I mean, this year has been an awesome year of promises manifesting. But he gave me another word. He said double portion. Come on, somebody. And we know that got to be true because of what we already seen in 2013. We seen people get their homes back. Hallelujah, somebody. We saw people go in and one car is towed up, messed up, and come out with two new cars. Yes, we did do it. We saw that. Yes, we did. We saw people go into the hospital, was supposed to die and not come out, and came out rejoicing, totally made well. We've seen the manifestations. What I'm saying, if we saw that word, and he talking about double, I'm building my faith for the double. I'm building my faith for the double. I'm building my faith for the double, God. I I know he's about to do something in this earth. And I'm not going to be stuck on the sideline watching others participate in the supernatural flow of God's power. I am going to be in the middle of what he's doing in the earth today. Come on, somebody. Living praise, we're about to go global. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2014, the name will ring in the nations. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Somebody said, don't look at me. I don't want to go to Africa. <laughs> Somebody got to go. <laughs> All right, ushers, go ahead. Let's give our, our envelopes. Let's receive our tithe and offering tonight. Boy, it's supernatural. I like it. I like it. I like it. 